Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how some people consider zakat as a fine. They think it is a big tax and they take it as a burden, like it's vat or sales tax. Allahu Akbar. Like Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anfal, وَمِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مَا يُنْفِقُ مَغْرَمًا There are some people, some of the Bedouins, and this message is for all of us, who consider what they are spending as a fine. When Allah says, spend this, they spend it, but they consider it as a fine. Now let me bring it to our context. When we are calculating zakat, let's never ever shortchange our own creator. We know it's 2.5% of a certain type of wealth. We must give 2.5% and always put the benefit where you are doubting. Give the benefit of the doubt to the poor person every single time. That which is better for the poor person, give it out. So for example, if you... I know in my case, I come from Zimbabwe, where we deal in many currencies. And sometimes people are calculating a cross rate. When it comes to Allah, use the best rate possible. Don't shortchange the people and say, no, 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 I'm going to use the lowest rate because ah, this is zakat, you know. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and may He grant us the knowledge that really there is a lot of barakah and blessings when you give more for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, when we are calculating our zakat, people ask us, should I use the cost price or the selling price? The answer is neither the cost nor the selling. Neither your cost nor, nor the selling price. It is the value of the goods on that day, also known as the replacement price. So say for example, you've got a lot of items in your business. You want to know, should I give zakat? Don't look at your cost. Because that might have gone up in value. So look at the value, the replacement value. Say for example, you've got, let me give you a good example. You've got a hacksaw, you've got 50 hacksaws. And you purchase them at 20 rands and you are selling them at 50 rands. But now the market value is gone up to 40 rands. You can't continue using 20 rands. You must use 40. That's the market price of those items at that particular time. This is something we need to understand and realize. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. If we don't understand, we need to go and seek knowledge from the scholars of this particular deen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us that whoever can protect themselves from their own stinginess and from the miserliness of their own souls, they are the most successful. That verse is in Surah Al-Hadid. Whoever can protect himself from the miserliness of his own soul is a successful person. Look at how Allah has worded it. That means if you can fight your own miserliness, now you are successful. We become miserly with time. We cannot give time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot give time to read salah. We cannot give time for fulfilling Allah's duty. How are we going to give our wealth? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يَبْخَلْ وَمَنْ يَبْخَلْ فَإِنَّمَا يَبْخَلُ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ From amongst you there are some who are very miserly and stingy. If that is the case, Allah is saying, Whoever is stingy shall only harm himself. وَاللَّهُ الْغَنِيُّ وَأَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ وَإِنْ تَتَوَلَّوْا يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُوا أَمْثَالَكُمْ Allah says, Allah is independent. He doesn't need our wealth. It is us who need the acceptance of Allah. He says, if you don't want to spend because of miserliness, I will change you and substitute you with others who will spend and they will not be like you. And this is why when we are spending, it is a favor that we are doing ourselves. We are not doing a favor to the poor person. When we give a poor person wealth, and I've mentioned this in one of my talks in the previous days, let's not think that, yes, yes, I've given this man wealth. No, I'm doing good to him. 
Wallahi, we need to thank Allah that He has put someone in front of us to accept that wealth from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of acceptance. And this is why Allah tells us in the Quran, spend your wealth before you regret. Before a day comes when you won't have that wealth anymore with you to spend it and that is the day of Qiyamah. A person dies leaving behind a million, two million, five million and many trillions. What will happen when they die? Will that money come with them into the grave? No, it won't. It is reported by the Chinese that there is an old folk joke about the Chinese that when they used to die because they wanted everything that they had earned to go with them, no one else must benefit from it. I don't know if it's true or not. It's just on a lighter note. So they say they used to put all their wealth inside, all the money in the grave as well with the person, subhanallah. And the money used to go in as well until the bright spark came. And he said, look guys, you know what? Give me all the money, I'll give you a check. Put the check in there. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us from those who are miserly. The reason I'm giving you this example is to show you that when it comes to money, we are quick to think. We are fast, we'll make any plan. Why can't we make a plan when it comes to closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When it comes to reciting the Qur'an, how much Qur'an did you recite today? That's a question. How much did I recite today? That's a question. Wallahi, I'd like to let you know that if we have not recited as much as we are supposed to do, it is our duty that in the same way we are witty to think of how to make money, we should be witty of how to make time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us again that don't find yourself dying without having spent. And this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it in many different places in the Quran in different wordings. In Surah Al-Baqarah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says just before Ayatul Kursi أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ يَوْمٌ لَا بَيْعٌ فِيهِ وَلَا خُلَّةٌ وَلَا شَفَاعَةٌ Allah says, spend from the wealth we've given you before a day will come when no deals will help anyone. Your spending on that day don't help. No friendship will help. No connections and contacts will help. Nothing will help. No intercession will help unless Allah has permitted it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of protection. Then Allah is warning us about our own wealth. And He says, when I've given you wealth, don't think that, oh, this is mine. Remember where it came from. And only spend on that which is beneficial for you. And the Quran specifically says, don't ever spend your wealth on that which is destructive. You want to buy things which are going to destroy your health, things which are going to destroy you, which will harm you with your own hands you're going to buy. Allah says no. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَأَنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَةِ Spend your wealth in the path of Allah, in the right cause, in the happiness of Allah. And never ever throw yourselves into destruction with the doing of your own hands. And this is why it is important and I'd like to mention this. We know we speak about drugs, we speak about alcohol, we speak about gambling, we speak about adultery, we speak about so many sins. But something that we need to take heed is the habit of smoking. Those who are smoking, you need to cut it down. It's a waste of money to be honest with you. You need to try and eradicate it, get rid of it. And those who have not smoked, believe me, it is prohibited for you to even try it. Because naturally there is a destruction. The boxes that are sold, it's written there. It says, smoking is hazardous to the health. Smoking kills. Two words, I've read it on one of the boxes. Sometimes they write it in small writing because they still want to sell it to you. But it's there. How can we think that it's good for us? And I'm sure everyone who smokes knows that it's a bad habit. They want to kick the habit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all in this month of Ramadan an opportunity to kick our bad habits. Believe me, it is something that is serious and we as Muslims should be the furthest away from it. I feel very, very sorry for those who are actually addicted and those who cannot leave the cigarette because definitely I know the pain that they are going through. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all.